Well, good evening. Again, my name is Kevin McCaskey. I uh, currently serve as the Chief Executive, excuse me, Chief Executive Officer of the Jefferson Economic Council. Uh, informally, uh, I just started that position two weeks ago, and I uh, was a Jefferson County Commissioner for uh, for six years, and uh, I accepted uh, Dr. Stevenson's invitation to, to moderate the debate because I um, it's not only per, uh, important personally that we have this debate, it's obviously very important to uh, each of you and the entire, uh, not only the entire county of Jefferson, but uh, the state of Colorado and our future, uh, both from you know determining what that appropriate balance is uh, uh, that the level of taxation versus uh, uh, the level of economic opportunity and the level of funding uh, uh, and expenditures in our education system. But before we get started, I, I want to introduce a few folks. I, I, I know I'm going to get in a little bit of trouble when I do this, uh, so I'm going to ask that all of the elected officials in the room stand up. I, I see former school board members Herford Percy and Sue Marinelli down here in front. I see uh, Sue King, Lakewood City Councilor. I see Senator Evie Hudak. Uh, I see actually Pam Feely from West Metro Fire District. Uh, Dave Wickman, Lakewood City Council. I see Tim Kaufman, Jefferson County Treasurer. Jim Everson, Jefferson County Treasurer. I see Max Tyler, State Representative, House District 23. And Again, the, the lights are bright up here, and if you can see me perspiring. Uh, anyway, if there are any other elected officials in the room, please stand up, and uh, we'd like to acknowledge you and thank you for your service. So go ahead, everybody. Please stand up. I see Laura Boggs, current school board member, and I'm I'm. I'm I can't see past this light here. I'm very sorry to the two gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you for uh, again joining us this evening. Tonight we're going to uh, have a presentation by Carol Hedges, director of the Colorado Fiscal Policy Institute. And uh, what we're going to do either during her presentation or during our esteemed panel uh, uh, comments. Uh, you have an opportunity to jot down a question, and Larry and Lisa, here's, here's Larry, I don't know where Lisa went, Lisa's in the back, raise your hand and they will bring you a three by five card. And you'll be graded on penmanship as well. But uh, write your question down and we will do our very best to get all of those answered this evening. And uh, as, as mentioned, uh, we have an esteemed panel this evening and I'd like to start by uh, introducing uh, Ladies First, uh, former State Senator and State Representative Norma Anderson, uh, who's represented Jeffco for a very, very long time in both chambers of the Colorado General Assembly and uh, was the first female majority leader in the House and first female majority leader in the Senate. And as she clarified for me this evening, the first person to be the majority leader in both chambers. So. Thank you, Senator Anderson, for joining us. <laughs> to her left and your far right is uh, Ray Baker. Ray is um, one of the, the founding partner for the Gold Crown Foundation. And uh, I had seen uh, Ray, and obviously an esteemed businessman uh, in, in Jefferson County in the Denver metropolitan region, but also spent a significant amount of time coaching girls softball right here at Lakewood, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for joining us, Ray. And jumping all the way over to this uh, side uh, on your far left is Penn Fifthner, former state representative from House District 23, this very House District, and uh, is now, I, I believe, a fellow at the Independence Institute. And uh, the Independence Institute is a nationally renowned think tank uh, that resides right here in Denver West with a golden address. So thank you, Penn, for joining us this evening. And uh, our last uh, panelist, not least by any stretch, is our current mayor of Lakewood, Bob Murphy. And uh, Mayor Murphy is uh, in the final year of his first term, 
as mayor and served uh, two, I believe, terms on council. Lakewood so has served uh, the citizens of Lakewood in an outstanding fashion for 12 years now. So welcome, Mr. Mayor. So without further ado, uh, we'd like to get on with our presentation by Carol Hedges. And remember, if you have a question, something comes to you during uh, any of the presentations uh, this evening, either from Carol or the panelists, just uh, raise your hand and we'll get you a three by five card, get your question down and then uh, we'll get it answered. So with that, Carol, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carol Hedges. I am the director of the Colorado Fiscal Policy Institute, and the slides do have a shadow on them. And so hopefully we'll be able to uh, make sense of all of them. It's really my pleasure to be here today. I, the Colorado Fiscal Policy Institute is a uh, 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization um, whose mission it is to work on issues of economic opportunity for all um, Coloradans. And, um, the, the project that I run, the Colorado Fiscal Policy Institute, is really focusing on tax and budget issues. And I have the pleasure of running around to talking to audiences all over the state um, about the important topics of taxes, budgets, and fiscal policy. Now, I love that because that's what I like to do, but I'm a nerd. And so I have to kind of get you guys to come with me now. You know, you're here, and I don't know if you're required by your you know, your employment, or, or whether you're actually interested in this topic. But hopefully, whatever it is, don't snore too loudly if you decide you can't take any more of it. And if you have questions that you're dying to have answers to, write them down on the cards. And stick with me if you can. Because I'm going to do my best to not be an advocate for any position tonight, but to do the best I can to explain sort of where we are in the state of Colorado uh, in terms of tax and budget issues. Um, and I'm going to talk about spending and I'm going to talk about revenue. And quite frankly, those are the two sides of this discussion. Now, before I start into my slides, and I've got a lot of slides, I'm going to go through my slides pretty quickly. We'll make sure that these slides are available to you if you would like to have them, so don't worry about having to write down everything. I didn't want to give them to you in advance because I was afraid you'd be reading the slides and not paying attention to me. But before I get started, I want to say thank you for coming tonight. Not because it's nice to have an audience, because it is, but because you're doing something so critically important. And that is you're getting yourselves educated on an, a really um, foundational issue uh, for how we treat one another in our communities. In Colorado, you, we, as voters, have unique responsibilities. We, we in Colorado, vote as Colorado voters, are the only voters in the country that have the sole authority to change tax policy by raising tax rates or implementing new taxes. Do you know that? Yeah. We can only do, we're the only ones who can do that. And that's something we in Colorado hold very dear. And we hold responsible our elected officials to make good informed decisions. And you all are taking an important step tonight to getting yourself well informed and educated as you become a decision maker on taxes and, the, and, and, and tax rates, et cetera, going forward. Potentially in 11, potentially in 12, who knows. But thank you for taking the time to take your job seriously as being a decision maker on tax policies here in the state of Colorado. Now I want to start with a very simple, and I'm sorry that that shadow is there, but I'm not sure I can do anything about it. But I want to start by it with a very simple proposition. You know, people think tax and budget issues are really hard, are really complicated. No, they're not. They're really quite simple. Colorado simply doesn't have the resources to fund the services that we expect to receive. How do we define expect? Those are the laws that, we've, that we pass at the, in the legislature. Um, those are rules and regulations, and those are the, the kinds of things that we've begun to expect over time. It's really not that complicated. We just don't have enough money to do the things that we've come to accept. Stagnant revenues, that's tax dollars primarily, combined with increasing demand for services is squeezing all the services provided by state government, whether it's public education, health care, or human services. So really the dilemma is quite simple. 
We don't have enough money to do what we have come to expect. And quite frankly, that's not just the Colorado Fiscal Policy Institute's perspective. It's a perspective that I think is pretty generally shared. Just recently, in fact, the 25th of February, the University of Denver Center for Colorado's Economic Future just released a report on this soft topic. And they said, and I quote, Colorado cannot expect to grow its way out of its budget problems. The center's state economic model, the center being theirs, shows a healthy economic recovery from the current economic downturn. However, that level of economic activity will fail to generate the revenue sufficient to keep pace with major programs driving general fund expectations. But it's not just the University of Denver. The Independence Institute, in November of 2010, in their citizens uh, budget, which I think there are copies of right here, and I'm sure that Penn's going to refer to them in a minute, said, focusing on trimming the fat fails to address Colorado's systematic budgetary problems. This past year, fiscal pressures became too large for further short-term manipulations. However, real corrective action was deferred yet again because the federal government stepped in to subsidize the state with stimulus funds. Next year, it is highly improbable that those funds will be authorized. Colorado must implement policy changes that address the structural nature of the problem. We can no longer rely on short-term fixes. We can no longer rely on simply looking to cut fat because we have a structural mismatch. We want more than our current revenue system is designed to pay for. Now that's the end probably of the easy stuff for the evening. Because now the questions become, how do we remedy that problem? Remember as we, I start to go through that, that there isn't an option to deficit spend in the state of Colorado. There isn't an option to do that. Constitutionally, our elected legislature and governor have to balance the budget each year. So when we have a shortfall, programs have to be reduced. Spending has to be reduced to match the amount of dollars coming in. Okay? So let's talk about spending versus revenue. I'm going to talk first of all about spending, and I'm going to share a few statistics with you on past spending. Before we jump into that, let's just get a basic overview of what the state budget looks like. Currently, in, well, in fiscal year 2010, state, the state of Colorado's total budget was about $19 billion. About 29% of that came from federal funds. Those are dollars that were shared, that we all paid into Washington, as, as well as everyone else in the country paid into Washington. And then they come back to state government through various means and various programs. And those dollars that come in make up about 29% of our budget. Now, 2010 is a bit of an anomaly because we did have the federal stimulus money. We all remember what the stimulus money was about, right? ARA. American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. So that popped up the size of this pie that, went to, that came from federal funds a little higher than it normally is. But that's what we're coming off of, about 29% of the budget coming from federal funds. About 39% comes from general funds. That's taxes as you know them, income taxes and sales taxes. In Colorado, the state sales tax is a single rate income tax. Everyone, no matter how much money you make, whether it's corporate income or individual income, pays 4.63% of their income in income taxes, right? It, the other big piece of the general fund is sales taxes. The sales tax that comes to the state is equivalent to 2.9%. If you buy things here in, in uh, Jefferson County, you probably pay more than 2.9% sales tax because a portion of that goes to the county uh, of, of Jefferson. I don't think you have a city. Um, have, I'm sorry, it, other way around. It probably goes to the city of Lakewood. Confused there for just a moment. But, 2.9% of that uh, 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 assessment comes to uh, state government, and that uh, primarily those two taxes, income and sales, make up the general fund. And the other 32% of the state budget is made up of cash funds. Those are fees that we pay, things that where we actually pay a fee for service. And so that is the definition of a fee is exactly that. It's collected by a, from a limited number of people and it is limited for a particular purpose. And about 32% of the state budget